is move out, move out of Mystic Sands, move into the boat day. Moving day, that's what today is. We are getting serious about getting the boat back in the water and the best way to do that is by being on the boat. And we're just ready to be home in our own space. It's been a long time. It has been way too long. Pretty stoked, it's a bit of a mess, <laughs> but I'm still pretty happy about it. I'm Nikki, this is Jason, and this is our floating home curiosity. We set sail four years ago, and some 13,000 nautical miles later, we landed in the kingdom of Tonga, where we decided to haul out for cyclone season, visit family, and load up on a crate full of much needed boat supplies. Sadly, because of COVID, our poor boat set abandoned for a year, but we're back, ready to work, and get our girl back in the water. <laughs> The boat's already pretty stuffed. I have literally no idea where we're gonna store all of that stuff. It's amazing how much we can accumulate. All of my stuff there for a second. No, 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 I'm not gonna throw you under the bus like that. All of her stuff. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> it's crazy. Nikki's gonna go with uh, Kel and take all the stuff that can't get wet. I'm gonna take these two little tubs that are waterproof, wherever they are, in the dinghy because I think it's gonna be a wet, wet, Windy ride. Yep. Windy, but not too wet, I guess, because there wasn't that much in the dinghy. Yeah, but home sweet home. Home sweet home. Home sweet home. This is a dance. This is, I'm exercising or dancing. I'm oh, not yeah. sure which one it is. <laughs> We have a little bit or a lot of unpacking to do and then we will give you a little tour of the yard because well it's going to be very different living here on the hard than it normally is when we're in the water. Well the first thing you'll notice is we're not sleeping on the owner's side because well this bed's not ready mainly because the diesel tank is here the engine is under here and if we were to sleep here we'd have to move the bed non-stop as we work on the engine change the water heater work on the diesel tanks which kind of creates chaos so we're actually gonna be sleeping on the other side in the porthole all right try to get the hospital corners <laughs> This is the forward cabin. This is where we're going to be sleeping because, well, there's nothing in here that we need access to for right now. There's no engines. There's no much of anything, really. So that's good. We'll be out of the way. We can sleep in here. And the other big reason for being on this side is because of our composting toilets. They're on this side of the boat. And because we're not in the water, then our seawater toilet, marine toilet, will not work but we can still use our composting toilet. This is our composting toilet. It's a very small space. This is a one cent tour, not even a two cent tour. Uh, 
here. Oh, there you go. Now you can see the toilet. We've been using composting toilet. Well, this same exact composting toilet for... 10 years? Nine? Uh, eight years, probably, because we didn't have it yeah, at the very like beginning, but we did get it pretty soon. So yeah, eight, nine years, somewhere in there for sure. Yeah, so we got this when we were in the RV, and at the time, people thought we were crazy. crazy. Yeah, because there were no van lifers, and there was nobody else that we found that was using a composting toilet. So we didn't have anything to go off of, other than the fact that we liked the idea of it, because there's no black tank. Obviously, it's eco-friendly, but aside from all of that, there's a lot of perks that make it very uh what's the word i'm looking for here practical that's the word i'm looking for practical they're very practical because you don't have the black tank and on our boat the black tanks are super tiny so they fill up in like two to three days with two people using it so our toilet is just not an option when we're inside a lagoon a marine park too close to shore or on the hard <laughs> and so our composting will go about a month before we have to really worry about disposing of that. And it's super easy to change out. We've done a video on that before, not on the boat, but same thing. And then the urine is separate and that's super easy to take care of as well. We only have to empty that about once, maybe twice a week, depending on how many fluids we drink. And yeah, that's it. So we've had the same composting toilet, like I said, for eight years, still freaking love it. I think it's like the greatest thing ever for Everybody used a composting toilet. We were probably like single-handedly not have drought issues anymore. I don't know, I'm making that up, but it saves a lot of water. You don't have sewage that you're dealing with, which is really great. And so many other things. I will put a link in the description box down below. We've written a lot of information about the composting toilet over the years. The manufacturer, which is Nature's Head, has loads of information on their website as well. And we have a link because we've been using this toilet for so long that it does give you a discount if you click through that should you decide to buy a composting toilet for yourself, which I highly recommend. And we're not the only people anymore. There's lots of people using these now. And I recently saw um, an Eamon and Beck video because they just built another van. And of course, Beck got super excited about their toilet because they have the same one, which makes me feel better because she gets as excited about her toilet as I do. Makes me feel less crazy. And Kara and Nate, another and Kara tiny Nate, house. Yeah, and yeah. So anyway, there's lots of other people out there using the composting toilet. If you're on the fence, know that there are lots of us out there who all rave about the composting toilet and think it's a great thing. Doors by vloggers around the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's exactly what this sounds like, but I do love the composting toilet. Okay, so that is one thing about living on the hard. You don't have any seawater, so you can't use seawater flush toilets, but we've got a composting toilet. The other thing, oh, let's go to the kitchen. So we're not using our black tanks and we don't have a gray tank. In fact, I don't think there's any sailboat we've ever been on that has a gray tank. So when you open the tap, it goes straight down the sink and right into the water, which is why we only use biodegradable soaps for our hands, for dishes, for cleaning, because we know it goes right into the water normally. But now we're on the hard and it would just go boom everywhere all over the ground underneath us, which we don't want because we don't want bugs, rats, mice, dogs getting attracted to food particles. So we capture it all into this little bucket and then we dispose of it properly or at least dispersely dispose of it. Not a word. <laughs> dispersely dispose of it. That works. You disperse it. Voila. And we do have access to city water with a spigot right behind our boat so we can fill up our tanks, which is great for washing dishes, washing our hands, cleaning the boat. But the water does not taste very good. It's super hard and, well, even the people in the yard don't drink it. They capture rainwater. And we fill up this guy, purify the rainwater through our filter that we got in Fiji. And we wouldn't even normally need <laughs> oh, this guy. Yeah, because our UV LED UV Acuva water purification system is normally working, so it would kill all the bacteria and it would run through filters and everything, but I haven't recommissioned it yet, so yeah. Let's get some rainwater. I'm thirsty. Yep. Our own private island. Those are the yard dogs and they go super duper crazy over the drone. Every time we fly it, they're like, oh, whoa, whoa, like going crazy. They wake up and just run back and forth. Small drone is the perfect dog toy. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. 
rain water. Okay, so the rain falls obviously on the roof, down into the little catch system here, and then into this big tank. And it's super simple, but that is pretty much what every household around here does. They all catch rainwater, and it rains plenty here. So you get a lot, lot of water. The swallows are going nuts. Yeah. While we're out of here, should we give them a tour of the garden? Sure. When you stay here, you also get access to the, uh, what do you, like, you pick garden. <laughs> we have a papaya tree over here. I guess it's a little protector to keep the rats from going up because the moment they start to turn ripe at all, it's a race between you and the rats who gets the papaya first. And it's usually the rat if you're not like on it. Mm, none are quite ready yet. Nope. Maybe in a couple days. And here are the spicy peppers. No, no, honey. Oh, do not oh, send a yes. oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. My favorite. Little habaneros or bongos or Scotch bonnet. Scotch bonnet, yeah. Proludine. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? This is the cruiser's bar, the hangout, the lounge, whatever you want to call it. This is where you come at the end of the day if you want to relax, hang out, share a beer or pick from the boat garden. <sighs> That'll go in dinner. Mmm, it's very lemony. It's like lemon basil, it smells really good. So there's basil, there's some what they call slimy spinach, it's like a local type of spinach. Tomato, just kind of on its last leg. But this is the end of the season here for growing a lot of these things. Cyclone season's about to start up, but it gets too hot and just kind of kills everything, including us if we don't hurry up and get in the water. <laughs> Are you harvesting? Yeah, this is another pepper plant. These are almost like Thai chili peppers. Yeah, super spicy. Yeah. Okay, what's next? Lime. Oh yeah, lime. Whole bunch over here. And this is what they call a bush lime, like the local lime tree. Did you say you see a bunch? I see some good ones. Yes. Oh, okay. Hold this, on. This one's ready. Cocktails. I was thinking pico de gallo. I was thinking cocktails. <laughs> Watch out, they have spikes. Very perky in there. Yes. Super spiky. Yeah. Got a couple of limes, some basil. That can go in our cocktail here in a little bit. But we're also right behind the loo. So. Hot water tank. That's nice. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing we are not doing on the boat is showering. One, because we'd have to get another bucket to catch that water, but also because they already have a shower here and it has hot water. So this is our shower. Nice big shower head. <laughs> okay, so that's the shower and then they do have toilets here. Two toilets for your convenience. Probably don't need like a close-up. No. Nope. Yeah, we'll spare you on that one. Just a toilet. <laughs> okay, so that's your uh, that's your facilities here. You got the garden tour. Obviously, you've got snorkeling. If you just head right off the ramp, we've got a lovely view from back at the boat. But wait, but wait. What about electricity? Oh, funny you should ask. I'll tell you about that. <laughs> Look at all that booty. <laughs> Wild harvesting from the boat yard. The locals drink the rainwater. Yeah, they'll just drink the rainwater. A lot of people will just drink straight rainwater, but you're really not supposed to. Look, it's probably not gonna kill you, but it's also not gonna be the cleanest water because rain falls from the sky and picks up all sorts of things that are in the atmosphere, which actually can be scary, especially on islands because they burn everything. Because what else are they gonna do with all of their trash? They don't have any way to take care of it any other way. So anyway, everything here gets burned, including plastics and who knows what else. So you've got everything that it picks up in the atmosphere, but then whatever it's falling on. How clean is your roof? Even for people that are on boats that have rainwater collection systems, a lot of people won't filter, but whatever was on your deck, your feet from walking around, that's all going into that water. So me personally, for, you know, it's like, I don't remember how much this is. It's not expensive. It's like 20, 30 bucks. And this will last you for a long time. These little Sawyer filters are, you just rinse them and you just keep reusing them. It's super easy. Grab Flow. Oh, 
Okay, you're supposed to tell us about electricity. Power. This is the first time we've actually had to worry about plugging in. Because normally when we're in the water, the solar and the lithium do most of the legwork. They can basically keep up with all of our needs. And if we get three or four days of clouds, maybe we'll have to run the generator for an hour. But we have to run it every three days anyway for our water main. So it's never really been a problem. But now it's been cloudy for like a week and nonstop raining and our batteries got down to like 50%. And I don't really like to take them below 50%. Even though they're lithium, they can go way lower, blah, blah, blah. But I don't like get caught with my pants down. I don't want my batteries lower than 50%. And we've been using a lot of extra power. Yeah, lots of extra power. Else. Buffing and vacuuming and doing all the cleaning stuff. I went to plug in. I had the step down thing for my shore power to plug into a 20 amp plug. Then I could go into and just like, it didn't work. I tried it. I got reverse polarity and I thought, holy crap, what do I do? So I called Raf from Just Catamarans and I said, what should we have done? What should we do? What can we do? He gave me this list and like five different options, of course, none of which he can get here. So I kind of Frankenstein something. It's working. And they said it was fine. It's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. We're not going to blow anything up. Exactly. Let me show you what I've done. So here's the deal. Our boat is set up for American style, 110 volt. The power here is Australian style, 230 volt. So I need this automatic step down transformer. So I can plug that into the Australian power here and then plug my 110 in here, turn it on. And that's gonna convert the voltage from 230 to 110 through my extension cord. And then it's plugged in here, run through my port light into the bedroom to this tiny little charger. It's called the NOCO Genius. It's actually made for lithium batteries because it has a lithium setting. And that's clamped on directly to my terminals to slowly trickle charge my batteries. And it's putting in about 15 amps, which doesn't really keep up with our consumption on a super cloudy day, but it gives a trickle charge and that overnight 15 amps for 10 hours is 150 amp hours it definitely supplements and gets us much closer to even by the time morning rolls around and then if it's sunny boom we're at 100 percent by the end of the day it's crazy because it's like super frankenstein but it works yeah and it's all just because different power sources yeah it's the first time i've ever had to plug in internationally and our blog post will include everything that raf recommended so that way if you're outfitting a boat and you plan on plugging in at other marinas then you can have a fighting chance or i can link to this thing too if you just want a frankenstein like me it definitely works so that is life on the hard it's mostly normal ish minus those couple of caveats because that's where we're sleeping electricity water our main resources there and so yeah it feels good to be home be back in my own space using my blender and my tea kettle and my oven and my utensils and be back in my own space because it feels like it has been forever it has. Yes, because, because it has been. I'm just so happy to be home and in my own space. I've already said that. I know that, but I can't help myself. Ah. Okay, 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 okay. So should we, A, keep dealing with all the unpacking, or B, make that cocktail you're talking about? It's kind of sunsetty outside. It is getting that time. Yeah, cocktail. Because yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure... You don't want to watch us continue to unpack anymore. Not that you've watched that much. I've saved you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because, um, yeah. Okay, so cocktail. <laughs> Lime, tapache, Basil with a little chili garnish should be very good. Huh? Should we take these outside? Yeah. Okay, water. Tell me about water. I am the dish man. Da, 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 dish man. <gasps> what the hell is that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs>
I just want to point out that one of those is yours. <laughs> that was easy. Easy. You're supposed to tell us about power. Uh. <laughs> <laughs>